Hi there, I'm Andy Robertson and this is Family Gamer TV. Welcome back to another episode of Family Gamer TV. I'm here with Jay Ward from Pixar Animation Studio. So, so what's your role at Pixar? So I'm the Cars Franchise Guardian, uh, sort of a creative consultant on all the Cars-related projects. Mm-hmm. And so what does that involve? Uh, you're the sort of the, the person who says what goes and doesn't go in Cars? A bit of that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. For anything from theme parks to publishing to toys. Now, a big part of the Cars universe now are a range of video games available across various platforms. Um, is that something which falls under your remit in terms of what's happening in those games? Uh, yeah, so typically I, I won't decide um, about a game getting made, but I would be the creative consultant once a game is decided, it's something that, that they would like to make, then I would be the person who would come on and make sure that it lines up with our world. How is a, a Cars game different to, to other games that may be being made? Uh, you know, what's unique in a Cars game, and, and for instance even in the uh, Xbox Connect, is that you want to make sure the cars are acting the way cars would. You know, we have what we call truth materials. So a mm-hmm. car has to feel heavy, it has to have weight. It can jump in the air, but it needs to land back down. It can't bounce around like a rubber ball, mm-hmm. things like that. Um, we have characters that are good guys, characters that are bad guys, and we want to be true to who those are, that those characters are... Uh, fulfilling the role that we had done in the storytelling of the film. Mm-hmm. So, Sounds great. Yeah. Um, and the game we're looking at today is Connect Rush, which is the new game for the Connect um, hands-free sensor, along the lines, I think, of um, Disneyland Adventures. But rather yeah. than focusing on the Disney franchises, it's the it's the Pixar, the Pixar characters and uh, Pixar films. Yeah. Films. And actually, this is yeah. unique. Uh, the Disneyland Adventure is cool because you're going into the park and you're doing a virtual theme park experience. This is unique because you're actually going into a Pixar film mm-hmm. and you're, you have five films and, and sort of three unique chapters within each, within each one so you have 15 unique adventures that you're playing in this game. So does Connect Rush include all the Pixar films or is it just a few? We actually focused on five films for this one. So you have The Incredibles, Up, Toy Story, Ratatouille and Cars. And you can choose each, uh, each adventure uniquely. You can just play one or you can play all. They're, they're not interlocked. You don't have to play one to unlock another one. Um, we chose those because there's such a variety of gameplay naturally set up in those movies. So you have everything from swimming in the sewers of Ratatouille or driving on the streets of Tokyo in the Cars Adventure or fighting Omnibots and Incredibles and really try to make a, a variety of gameplay. In terms of maybe the Cars games that people have already played on mm. the Wii or the 360, and yep. there's, there's quite a few there that you know, they've been very good. Yep. How does the Connect Rush cars bit differ. This is a unique one because you become the car in the game and rather than you having a controller and sort of you know looking at the back of the car and choosing left or right you're physically holding your hands out and steering your car down the road. When you jump the car jumps in the air. Mm -hmm. If you lift up a leg the car drives on two wheels. Uh, It allows you to bring a lot more personality to the car because you're actually having these animated attributes to yourself that are that are being shown on the screen in the car. Mm -hmm. And in terms of who you think the game would be best suited to is there a particular age group you think you're you're aiming this particular game at? Well, this is an interesting thing because it's a lot like Pixar films. You know, obviously uh, they have a tremendous appeal to children, but also to parents as well because they play these games with their kids and they watch the films with the kids. And I can't tell you how many parents or adults say, oh, I love Ratatouille or I love Cars or Incredibles. Because, yeah, but my kids love Ratatouille, yeah. yeah but, and yet you can watch that movie with them a number of times and it's still engaging for you. Yeah. That's the difference, I think, between a good, just a good film and just a children's film. And with the Cars 2 film, something my family found was that the older kids were happy to follow it, but it seems like a slightly more grown-up, yeah. more of a sort of pastiche of different themes. Yeah. And some of like our younger offspring. Whereas Cars 50. 1 had that sort of a, had that appeal to young children. Yeah, it was very yeah. straightforward. I think the narrative in Cars 2 is sort of a little bit more meandering, asked a bit more of the viewer. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that something that you have to sort of engage with in terms of bringing that into the, the, the video game? I mean, it's... It, it, it's an amalgam. I mean, it has elements of both classic cars and cars 2 in it. Um, but what's cool about it is, is that because you're driving the car in the game, um, for small kids, it's this intuitive thing of having their hands on this virtual steering wheel and steering down the road, which kids love. Mm-hmm. So even if they've never even seen cars 2, there's this natural gameplay that pulls them in. Uh, we were doing a demonstration, and there was a, a, a little boy there who was three years old with his mother. And three years old is pretty young for Connect. And he walked up, and he intuitively put his hands out, and he began to steer. Mm-hmm. And the car responded and drove down the road. And this, this child, you could see this connection between him and the system where he was like, I'm, I'm doing that. Yeah, nice. C- Disneyland Adventures, I think it was a 7 plus. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that story sounds like Connect, um, Connect Rush 
is, is, is sort of skewing lower. In terms of its rating, is it coming in at a three? No, I think it's coming in at the same rating, you know, because you have um, certain, certain levels of peril in a game. You know, you have something like The Incredibles where there's, you know, there's gunplay and there's shooting and all those things going on. So you still have that same level of, of, of peril or adventure. And the rating systems are always interesting that way as far as what they think the correct age mm -hmm. range is. Yeah, and something that I've done in my family is play through the Connect Adventures games beforehand yeah. and then pick out the games that I know would be fine for my younger kids. Yeah. And that seems to be quite a nice way to, to sort of work around that 7 plus without, without exposing them to yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. most, most of it, actually, they were fine with. I yeah. think there's a bit of sword play and actually they, they quite like getting yeah, their yeah, hands on that. Yeah, and I mean, you know, the, the ratings are there to be, to be safe, to be protective, but of course it's always the parents' discretion as far as what they feel that their child is okay with playing. Like you said, sword play for your kids. You know, probably not the worst thing in the world. Same thing with, with, the, um, with the game. We felt like we put everything in there that we would put in our movies. Nothing that would be offensive or extremely violent or dangerous or would emulate behavior we would want kids to do. Mm -hmm. And we were pretty careful about that. So. I was interested to see in the Cars 2 film mm. how it did seem to introduce more sort of militaristic themes. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's cars with weapons. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was that a difficult decision to include those? Is that a conversation you were involved in? Uh, in terms of the film? Yeah. Uh, the film would be directed by John Lasseter. So uh, his vision of Cars and what he wanted for the film, and I think for you know, Cars 2, I can't speak on his behalf, but I think for Cars 2, you know, his feeling was to make a completely different movie than the first one, to really not just feel like it was a sequel to the first movie, something safe, but to really take somebody on a really action-packed adventure. That's what he wanted, and of course that did skew it a little bit older. Um, but you know what's neat is that each film has its stands on its own leg. I think that you know I have a young boy who loves the first Cars. Yeah. My daughter, who's older, really likes the second movie better because she understands a little bit more of the adult humor and the action and all that in the second film. So mm -hmm. it's something for for each of them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting you talk about your, how your children are responding to the films there because yeah. something my daughter actually noticed and was asking me about was saying, "Hey, Dad, in the Cars film." All the racing cars are boys. <laughs> There's mm. no racing cars that are girls. There was a racing girl. It was uh, Carla Veloso from Brazil. Yeah, oh, in, in the Cars movie. 2. Yeah, because yeah, she was talking about Cars 1, and I was yeah. saying, oh, maybe there is something in Cars 2. Yep, and there was is. that an intentional, in terms of how you deal with gender in the game, is there an intentional? Gender is hard in our films and, and games. The problem is, is that a car, um, not every car works as a female character. Because cars have a grill on the front that often reads as a mustache, <laughs> or um, the squareness of the front of a car looks like a heavy jaw. Mm -hmm. And when you do animation, um, it's the same way that a feminine shape is typically round and a male shape is angular. And if you look, that's just classic visual storytelling in animation or, or in, in artwork. And maybe just finishing off talking about some of these other games that also use the Cars branding. Yep. Um, a very popular among some of our viewers has been the um, AppMates game for uh, yeah. the iPad, where yep. you take a small uh, you know, plastic Cars toy, mm -hmm. put it on your iPad screen and actually drive around my my um, four-year-old is just completely um, you know, addicted to that, really. You know, yeah. He plays it within reason, but... I worked on that game quite a bit. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So how, yeah. How, how did that idea develop, maybe? And how, how do you think that sort of gameplay extends uh, the experience? I think it's, it's finding the, the best application for what the device is. You know, um, with the iPad, you have this virtual play mat, and then taking mm. a physical object and moving it on was a really unique application for that that just was a natural fit like why didn't somebody think of this sooner uh you know with the connect game we have this thing where you are physically the controller you don't have to hold anything in your hands the good thing about it is you're getting kids off the couch and so it's like oh wait here's a natural way to make a child physically involve themselves in the game mm -hmm. so that seemed like it's just that natural pairing again just like the ipad or the connect is what's the best application for this device from Pixar's standpoint, right? Is it something that will actually lend itself to the film or you know, be a good experience? The iPad, I think, is a great example because you're physically driving the car. In this game, you're holding your hands out and you're driving down the road. So again, it's that, it's that right level of engagement that gets you excited about it. Well, thanks for your time. It's been really interesting. Yeah. And we'll be back with more Family Gamer TV soon. Yeah.